The third iteration of the Splatoon games added a couple of extra ways to get ability chunks, as well as the option to change the main ability of any gear using chunks. This means that you can now customize all of your gear, including the ones from your amiibo, for both fashion and function. But to do so, you're gonna need a lot of ability chunks. So that begs the question, what is the most time efficient way to get the ability chunks you need to make that happen? To answer this question, I played Splatoon 3 for hours on end, collecting data on all of the ways you can get ability chunks, and then I did some calculations to see how long each method takes, and see if they're even worth pursuing. And finally, I did some test runs to make sure that these results were correct and made sense. Watch out gamers, I've committed a science. Something I did need to commit science for is today's partner, Mint Mobile. You know, the ones with Ryan Reynolds? Mint Mobile offers unlimited text and talk and premium wireless for as low as $15 a month. The best part is, you won't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data to get these low rates. That's because they're built on the nation's largest 5G network and keep their costs low by selling directly to you online. Since they don't have to pay rent for a building or those pesky sale clerks, Mint can pass those savings on to you. As an introvert, I really liked the no sales clerk part. It was super easy to just go online and order a new SIM card myself. I didn't have to talk to anyone. I tried using the Splatoon 3 app, watched some useful guides on YouTube, and even called up my friends on Discord while out on a walk using Mint on one phone and my previous carrier on the other. And guess what? I could not tell the difference. Which was shocking considering I was spending $40 a month for my old wireless plan, but since I never used more than 4 gigs of mobile data a month anyways, I could have been paying only $15 a month for the same level of service with Mint Mobile. I was literally paying more than double. As an added savings bonus, if you purchase a 3 month plan using my link, mintmobile.com slash vasco, through January 15th, you will receive an additional 3 months for free. You can find the link in the description, or just scan the QR code that's on screen. This offer is available on all plans, including unlimited, so stop paying more than you need to on your wireless bill and start saving big with Mint Mobile. When it comes to farming chunks, there's really only two ways to go about it. You can either passively farm chunks or actively farm chunks, the difference being whether or not you're looking for a specific ability. Let's quickly cover the passive farming methods since those are more of a long-term strategy to get plenty of chunks for your future self. There are three ways to passively farm chunks. The first is through the shout-out machine which will give you a random item once a day for 5,000 coins. You can keep going for 30,000 coins, but I don't think it's worth it. Your odds of pulling ability chunks are about 10%, so it's not too bad, but also not a hyper-reliable method since the chunks you get are random. The second is also just as unreliable. The shell drone from the single player mode will fetch you an item once a day for 999 power eggs. You can unlock it by exploring 100% of every map and finding every locker collectible. I'll be making a dedicated video on the shell drone, but just know that the odds of getting ability chunks from it are also 10%. If you're doing both methods, you're likely to get ability chunks from either once or twice a week. The final method is Salmon Run. This is an excellent way to get coins, tickets, and ability chunks, but I consider it a passive method since you'll be getting random abilities. Up until you reach the super bonus, you'll be awarded these capsules, all of which have a 50% chance of giving you 5,000 coins. The purple ones can give you drink tickets, the green ones can give you ability chunks, the orange ones give you money or experience tickets, and the yellow ones give you more more coins. Pink capsules and gear will always give you a gear with at least one ability slot, which you can instantly scrub for a chunk. In general, if you only play up until the super bonus, you can get some extra tickets and cash, but playing beyond it guarantees you'll be getting only ability chunks. The downside is that these chunks will always be random. As someone who mainly plays Salmon Run, I can tell you that this is a pretty good passive method, and I've collected enough chunks in 2 months to build up any gear set I'd want. In terms of time efficiency, you can expect to get roughly 10 ability chunks per hour of gameplay past the super bonus. A very easy way to go about this is to play each wave of Salmon Run until you run into the Kohozuna twice. After a while, you need to start winning more and more to get the gear abilities, so two Kohozunas is typically the most time efficient thing to do. Of course, you can just keep on playing Salmon Run for as long as you want, and you're gonna keep getting the rewards, it's just the longer you play, the less rewards you're gonna keep getting. Now, what if you wanted to get some specific ability chunks? Enter the active farming methods. There are really only two ways to get specific ability chunks at the moment. The first is to talk to Merch, who can get you these chunks in several ways. You can either scrub the slots off of any gear, or reroll 
fill the slots on a gear that has three filled ability slots. Scrubbing gear costs 20,000 coins regardless of whether you have one ability chunk or three, so it gets pretty pricey. The cost goes down to 2,000 coins for the Splatfest T, so if you're looking for a cheap way to get ability chunks, save your energy for Splatfest. Rerolling your abilities will give you the chunks from the previous subslots you had, however, this method is extremely expensive, coming in at one sea snail per reroll. At the moment, you can only get sea snails from Splatfest, and they have another use that I'll talk about later. So unless you've gone and used a certain Lean Yoshi's tool to know exactly what to expect from your rerolls and are well aware of the risk, I would advise you to avoid rerolling for now. It's just like Genshin Impact, it's a very expensive roll and you probably won't get what you want, so don't bother. This brings me to the most deliberate thing you can do to farm specific ability chunks, buying a drink and leveling up gear. When you buy a drink for a specific ability, you will make the odds of getting that ability on any gear 30%. How do I know it's 30? I tried it with every different combination and took the average. The odds are most visible on neutral gear like Cuttlefish, Amiibo, and Grisco, which will get you the drink ability about 30% of the time. Typically, each brand has a boosted rate for one ability and a reduced rate for another. Here's a chart for you. It's a pretty chart. Wahoo! Based on the rough time estimates from 30 ability chunks on regular gear, you can expect the boosted ability 23% of the time, the reduced ability 14% of the time, and anything else 63% of the time. These are very rough estimates. These numbers get pretty funny when you add a drink in the mix. You would think that wearing gear with a boosted rate and drinking juice for that same ability is a good idea, but in reality, all it does is increase the rate of that boosted ability to 30% and just reduces the odds of the negative ability. If you drink something for an ability that falls in the neutral category, that specific ability's odds will rock it up to 30%, but since it is a pie, a big slice of the favored ability goes away. Still not a very ideal or efficient thing to do. Ironically, the best approach is to drink for the unfavorable ability on that brand. Since the drink boosts the negative ability's rate to 30%, it'll take most of the pie from the neutral abilities, and effectively give you a 60% chance of getting either the positive or negative ability from that brand. This way, you can farm two specific abilities at the same time. Also, I'd like to point out that you can and should still wear other brands if you need to, since regardless of their race, you will still be getting the drink ability about 30% of the time on any brand. Drinking for the negative ability just gives you more control over what abilities you get overall, but it is not the end all be all, don't bother at all if you don't got a full set of Anaki sort of thing, one Anaki and two whatevers works just fine. You'd think we'd be done by this point, but nope, because we still have to talk about gear levels and whether or not they're even worth it. Spoiler alert, they're not. You can increase the star rating of a gear by buying a duplicate of it from the shops or by spending some sea snails with merch. The process gets very pricey very fast, but it comes with a slight benefit. At the 3 stars, you have a 3% experience boost to that clothing's ability gauge. At 4 stars, you get a 6% boost, and at 5 stars, you get a whopping 10% boost. The best part about these boosts is that they stack with the 50% boost from the drinks, so a 5 star gear with a drink will be getting you a 65% experience boost for that clothing item ability gauge. But is this worth it? To find out, I calculated how long it would take you to go from zero ability slots to all three if you were to play turf war and win every single match. If you want to know why I chose turf wars for this, check out the experience guide video. This calculation is for the minimum amount of time it would take you to fill up all three ability slots. I also assume that each match takes about four minutes to account for queue times and loading screens. A two-star gear with no drink will take at least 69 minutes to fill. Nice, is what I would say, but but it's not nice because that's over an hour of gameplay, and this is the minimum. So what about a 5 star gear with its 10% boost? Well, it would effectively take you 10% less time, so it drops down to 62 minutes. That's not much of an improvement if you ask me, it's just 2 games less. Considering the 350,000 coins you'd have to spend to get a gear to 5 stars, I don't think it's worth it. The good news about all of this is that you can get away with farming abilities on 2 star gear. You're not missing out that much. Now if you're going down to 1 star or 0 star, that's when you're missing out, so make sure the gear you use is at least 2 stars. Having a drink, on the other hand, is a must. 2 star gears with no drink take at least 69 minutes to fill. A 2 star gear with a drink drops that minimum time down to 45 minutes. Compare that to the 7 minute drop of the 5 star gear, you're saving a whole 34 minutes by having a drink instead. And of course, for comparison's sake, a 5 star gear with a drink will take at least 42 minutes to fill out. So in reality, as long 
long as you have a drink, going from 2 stars to 5 stars only saves you about 3 minutes of gameplay, that's literally just one less turf war match. I would like to remind you that this would be if you're winning every single game. These times will almost triple if you lose every single match instead, or double if you're winning about half the time. The good news is that if you're winning every turf war, you only need 12 wins to max out a 2 star gear with a drink, so I'd say on average, one drink converts to 9 ability slots if you start out with an all empty gear set. If you have gear of all of the same brand and drink for that unfavored ability, you can expect 6 of the 9 slots to have a favored or unfavored ability. This process is a bit slower than Salmon Run, but since it's a more deliberate method, you can expect to get 2-3 to three chunks of the desired ability per hour. Which is pretty slow if you ask me, but it sure beats the one desired chunk per hour and a half of the passive methods. Being deliberate makes things go 3 times faster, but it's still pretty slow. Since getting a 5 star gear doesn't really improve your farming time by much, I would advise you to never use the sea snails to boost the star level of regular gear. You can just buy the upgrades at the shops. I know they show up at random and you kinda have to wait a while, but you get them soon enough. And again, you really aren't missing out on much by having 2 star gear instead of 5 star gear. However, if you like to wear amiibo, grisco, or cuddle gear, you can use the sea snails to get those to 5 stars. Sea snails are the only way to get gear from those brands to a higher level. At the end of the day, that 5 star bonus is a nice way to passively farm for abilities, since you still get an extra chunk when you max out an experience gauge, which takes about 28,000 points to fill once you have its slots maxed out. So even if you have a 0 star gear with its 1 slot full, you still get an extra chunk once you fill out those 28,000 points and it's just gonna keep looping. With a 5 star gear you'll get an extra chunk a tiny bit faster. This is mostly a good passive farming method if you really don't like salmon run or you already have a gear set built and you just wanna passively build things up while you're playing ranked. It should get you about 2-3 to three chunks per hour of gameplay. Overall, farming for ability chunks is a pretty slow process, and although the game lets you farm for specific abilities thanks to the drinks, your best bet is to just passively farm chunks and enjoy the game for a month or two before jumping into building gear sets. For reference, I play this game for about 90 minutes each day and have collected enough chunks to build any gear set I'd like, which I should probably do soon. Do you have any tips for farming ability chunks? Anything I missed or forgot? Any other game mechanics you'd like to know more about? Let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to go commit more science to help keep the community informed on the game's mechanics. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.